following is a presentation of Main Street Media, your source for news, sports, and information on Main Street in Middle Tennessee. Monday to you. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm Devin O'Day and I've got all sorts of stuff. We're going to have menu Monday. We're going to talk about edamame. What the heck is it? And are, are you the, uh, have you ever been guilty of thinking it's a snow pea and eating the whole thing and that outside rind of edamame just gets bigger and bigger and turns into like, I don't know, uh, a rug in your mouth. <laughs> We're going to talk about what is edamame? How do you prepare it? And yes, you can actually prepare it in your very own kitchen. And you don't have to find it in the frozen food section. You might be getting it in your CSA boxes, especially if you go out to Green Door Gourmet. We're going to find out a little bit about that. We're going to talk about World Orphans Day, and we're going to talk about National Farmers Market Week. It ended on the 13th, but we want to shine the light on what it actually takes to put together a good farmer's market. Farmers markets don't just happen. Hi, I'm Emily Lyson. I'm the director of development for the Lawrence Farmers Market. So I'm Jill Elmers. I have been a vendor at the Farmers Market for, this is new year number 21, and I am acting as the board chair right now. So we are the oldest farmers market in Kansas. We've been around since 1976. We work with different nonprofits um, and some for-profits that will come and have an informational booth and you can go talk to them about, learn about their organization and what their mission is. There's musicians around the place. And yeah, you find out our different programs. So we have a kid scavenger hunt that runs every week. Um, we have a loyalty card program so you can get your um, loyalty card stamped. Yeah, there's about usually 60 vendors um, on, on a good day out there. So it, it, we do have a lot of, of, of different variety that, that, that caters to a little bit of everyone. and, and as Emily mentioned, it's pretty important to us that we exclude no one from our market as both a vendor and as a uh, customer. And so we work pretty hard to, to make sure it's a welcoming place for everyone. We're not working for profit. Um, you know, we have a very small budget that we use to pay our staff and to um, do marketing and to buy tents and things like that. It is our job to create a market that people want to come to. Sometimes it's a lot of work. We get a lot of um, applicants who um, all want to sell chocolate chip cookies. And you can only have so many chocolate chip cookies at the farmer's market. This board in particular is putting more emphasis on if you're going to make a value added product like chocolate chip cookies, that you're using local products within your cookies. Yeah, it can be challenging sometimes. I mean, our priority is, you know, fruits, vegetables, meats, cheeses, things, you know, things like that. We have a brand new vendor this year that people line up before the bell even rings to get these stuffed donuts that are, you know, they're just, they're amazing. <laughs> Lawrence Farmer's Market is definitely a big part of the community. It's, it's a huge community draw. It's a wonderful space for everybody to come together. Every dollar you're spending that you, you know, at the Farmer's Market, you know that's going straight to a local business to pay their employees, to, you know, pay the taxes that go right back here into the community. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a way to keep our local food system stable is to purchase here. We are still at 1% of what the, our community spends on food. 
And so um, we would love to have that 1% even grow to just two, because that would be huge, even if it grew 1% up to two. So um, I encourage everyone to visit their local farms. That's just a beautiful place to be. Yeah. Watch the sun come up every day and see all the cows and the new bursts and everything like that. That's what makes it special. They might bury all that money in the dirt and then leave it up to the weather. <laughs> you, you better love what you're doing or it's just not going to be that good. We're blessed. We are. We're very We've been blessed. blessed. There's no yep. doubt at all about that. You farm because you love it. Our friends at Farm Credit Mid-America are helping people see and realize their homesteading dreams. People all across the country are wanting not to be vulnerable again. And they're realizing that planting and growing and getting things to come out of the dirt is not just, it's not just something that uh, about feeding people at their table and not just about being vulnerable. It's about your home, your, your whole mental health uh, and, and how you feel about life. And that is very important. We've got a group of people here in uh, Middle Tennessee that are really helping people when it comes to mental health. And there's a free grant that has taken place that allows people to get the services of volunteer behavioral health for free. We'll tell you about that right now. Hi, this is Melissa Hoisington, Regional Crisis Director from Volunteer Behavioral Health. Disasters can affect everything in your life, including your emotional health. Help is available during these uncertain times. The Tennessee Recovery Project is a free, supportive resource for adults and children who have experienced the effects of natural or human-caused disasters. Specialists are available for counseling by phone or in person. For free, confidential service, please call 833-954-2424. The hotline is open seven days a week, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Move forward with the help from the Tennessee Recovery Project. A lot of people don't realize how important art is to your own well-being. And uh, we call this Menu Monday, but we also call it Mental Health Monday. And I always try to include something that's going to help your mental uplift because we've had some hard things happen in the last few years. The National Public Library has some wonderful things that they do to help people with their mental health. Creating something, creativity is always a way back from a dark place. It always helps. And there are little classes at the National Public Library. And especially this time, we're going to go to our Hermitage branch, whether you are at the Nashville branch, the Hermitage branch, the branch out west Nashville, it doesn't matter because one library card covers everything and all the libraries share. And they have an incredible YouTube channel with all sorts of things for kids, all sorts of things for you to learn and great programs, including a seed exchange that happens all year. It's like for gardeners, you can get seeds for free if you have a library card and you can bring seeds back at the end of that season Harvest your seeds, share your heirloom seeds. That's what they do. Part of the seed exchange at the Nashville Public Library. But there's also some wonderful creative projects. Hi, everyone. I'm Miss Emma from the Nashville Public Library, and welcome to Reuse It, where you find items around your home and reuse them. So for today, we're going to be making garden label makers with rocks. And of course, you can use any other sort of thing if you want to, but um, we're choosing rocks today because, let's be honest, they're everywhere. And sometimes you have to find a way to repurpose a rock. So in order to make this happen, we need just a couple of things. It's really simple, really easy. You just need a rock, obviously, some paint, and of course, a paintbrush and a Sharpie. That's it. That's all you need. So... Stick around and I'll be sure to show you here in a couple of minutes. To get started, we're simply going to start by doing just a couple of simple things. Reality, we're going to start with painting first. Now, of course, if you want to draw, if you have a sense of what you want to draw first, you're more than welcome to. For example, you can uh, take your Sharpie and just simply draw on top here, like where you exactly kind of want. 
your drawing to go. And this is something you can do as far as what you're doing, uh, what we're doing here is we're basically going ahead and labeling, like in a way helping us label the plant that we're looking for. And also kind of helps um, when we're trying to search for our gar garden maker, because if you're like me, um, sometimes you let the garden get a little um, over weedy, uh, have too much weeds in there. Sometimes this can be helpful to help as a place marker to help you find your label, your uh, garden label. But if, especially if you want to keep a more natural look. Now, of course, if you want to go ahead and paint the top of the rock, you're more than welcome to. So, but of course, I'm choosing a more natural look, but that's again up to you. But I'm going to go ahead and basically start by painting my rock. And you don't have to choose the same color as me. I actually mixed um, some dark, some yellow and some blue together to make this really pretty green. Of course, you can go for anything, um, any sort of green color that you're looking for. You're basically, the idea is you're trying to make something, trying to make it fairly close to the actual color or not really the color, but the actual like label the plant correctly. Like for example, if you were using, if you're making chives, you would basically just paint a like a long line right here and then you would take it going with some pink and just put on the top to really get a more defined uh, look here. But we're not doing chives today, which of course you can do chives if you want to. We're doing basil today, but that is completely up to you. Of course, once you're finished, you're going to want to make sure this drives. Um, I actually have a pre-painted rock on uh, off camera that we're going to use to continue the video, just for the sake of time, to continue using the video. Um, and it took mainly about an hour. And it's up to you, of course. But I'll go back when, once this dries and basically relabel it. Once you're finished with your paint, you're going to go with your dry paint here, like I have so. And your sharpie and you're basically gonna go in right here and just outline where you painted to really give it a more defined look okay but after you're finished doing that you're simply going to take again with your sharpie and of course you again if you painted the top of your rock this will be more defined. Or if you want to go a little bit more crazy and go with some paint, you can. Or, you know, what if you want to use a different color Sharpie? That is also an option. But just simply label your rock and voila, have yourself your very own garden label uh, placement. For any, and you can do, and this is great because you can do it with so many different things, um, so many different varieties of plants. You can do this with tomatoes, chives, anything. Just make sure that when you do it, you can just um, adjust, uh, just adjust what illustration you're doing. And of course, you don't have to make them tiny. You can make them large. You can make them even smaller if you're into that sort of thing. But this is something cheap, fun, easy avid rock collectors or just with your kids or with your grandparents that you can do with in just a couple of minutes like so but thank you guys so much for tuning in as always we'll make sure to leave a link down below to an uh to our catalog but that has so many cool ideas much like this one as always make sure to stay safe stay healthy and you know with this wonderful summer weather stay hydrated and i'll see you guys next time on reuse it see you later bye isn't that adorable? I just think that's so cool. I love garden ideas. And if you think your gardens are going away, no, I will tell you my butternut squash is coming in. All your winter lettuces are going to be coming in as, it, as you get a little frosty. Lettuces do great. All of your greens, you can plant those. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff when it comes to getting our hands in the dirt and coming up. And I've got a couple of new shows that we're going to be spinning off here at Main Street Television. One is called Roosters and Roots, brought to us by Farm Credit. And we're going to be talking about how to create your own homestead and how to plant things. And then we're going to go to the garden over at Green Door for Devin's Table, where it's all things lifestyle, kind of creating a culture from the kitchen to the table, from the garden 
to the guest room. We are going to be talking about all sorts of things, decor and home living. And if you want to make sure that you follow all things that it comes to our Middle Tennessee area, don't forget our brand new show at Main Street Club. <laughs> Time for this week in Clarksville. And now, here's your host, Stephanie Miller. Stephanie Miller is a rock star. She knows all about Clarksville. And I love the shows that we have here, even if you don't live there anymore. You can still go to Main Street Clarksville and keep up with the news and all the things going on in your hometown. We're going to be expanding Main Street Television to all the burgs where we already serve with newspapers. So if you've got a story or you've got something going on, just message me here, Devin O'Day at Gmail. Let's go to Murfreesboro now. The Bacon Fest is coming. Do you love bacon? I mean, do you really love bacon? Who doesn't, right? The third annual Murfreesboro Bacon Fest is coming up Saturday, September 10th. Admission and parking are free. The Bacon Festival will feature live music, food, and craft vendors. And did I say bacon? You can ride a mechanical hog ride, visit the kids zone with free inflatables. There will also be hourly raffles with great prizes and an opportunity to purchase Bacon Festival merchandise. And did I say bacon? Yeah! There will even be a bacon eating contest. Visit the third annual Murfreesboro Bacon Festival Facebook page for all the details. Well, you do follow their Facebook page and get all the info, but let's talk about bacon and meats and how does the farm to table work when it comes to meats? Well, you can go to all sorts of places at its uh, shops, shop springs creamery. They also serve a lot of natural farmers who have their pork and their beef and their bacon. You can get it right there in the little ice cream shop right there in the case and support a local farmer. And the, Oh, it's just incredible. Or if you're on the square in Lebanon, have you heard of Seven Cedars? Seven Cedars Butcher Block in Lebanon, Tennessee is the leading butcher shop serving Nashville, Hermitage, Hendersonville, Murfreesboro, Gallatin, and surrounding areas. Founded by farmer and butcher Stephen George in Lebanon, Tennessee, he understands start to finish what it takes to deliver a cut above the competition. We offer a variety of items such as beef, pork, chicken, lamb, and so much more. After years of herd development and proper nutrition, he was able to establish a premium product that's growing demand in Middle Tennessee. No hormones or antibiotics ever. All our beef is dry aged, 21 days minimum before hand cut by our team. Stop on in, 135 Public Square in Lebanon, Tennessee. Or give us a call, 615-547-4424. We are Seven Cedars Butcher Block. I love supporting our local farmers and you can't get fresher than that. You just can't get fresher than that. And there are a lot of farmers who are taking the direct approach and a lot of consumers who are taking the direct approach as well. We're going to take the direct approach now. Who's watching today? Let's see who is on the horn with us. Oh my gosh. So many people have joined us. Good morning, Terry. How are you? Yes, you are an Elvis fan. It, uh, Elvis week going on. Speaking of, let me tell you, Terry, since you're an Elvis fan, August 27th, Priscilla and the group at Graceland is going to be having a, a worldwide auction of the lost, the lost items of jewelry of Elvis and Colonel Tom Parker. Now, today in Nashville at the Glen Campbell Museum until five o'clock today, they're having a preview for media. And I'm not sure if you can get in or not. I'll give you a, a website to get in all the information. But you get to see some of the, the pieces. Um, it's, the, it's called The Lost Collection of Parker Jewelry, Colonel Tom Parker, a collection of Elvis Presley memorabilia, including personal jewelry, Elvis and Priscilla's wedding tray, a lot of Elvis's stage jewelry, uh, the 
it's just a lot. And they're doing this just kind of on the heels of the movie Elvis that just came out. So a lot of this will be there. And if you want a website to find out more about it now today at the Glen Campbell museum until I'm sorry, till one o'clock today, the media is having a preview, but if you want to go online and see the whole collection, here's your website. G W S auctions.com gwsauctions.com and it is the lost jewelry of elvis and colonel tom parker and uh one of the curators is priscilla so she's gone through and she's like okay you know i go when elvis declutters we get to benefit right if you're an elvis fan good morning good morning good afternoon to corinne flip we're your midday show so it's kind of a little bit six of one half a dozen of the other elizabeth good to have you here happy monday to you regina i'm so glad you're doing well today good morning steve bernie what would we do without you johnny van Oker. johnny it's always good to have you here and send in love right back to you let's see uh oh Steve, I know. I love Clarksville, too. It's such a burgeoning uh, area. It's so incredible. Uh, John Black, we came to Clarksville, Fort Campbell in 73. I-24 did not go all the way to Clarksville. <laughs> Boy, John, I bet you have some stories. I bet you could call up Stephanie Miller and tell her a few things that she could add as far as historic parts of Clarksville. Well, if you are like me, you probably love boats, but I don't have a lot of time to own a boat. But did you know there's actually a nautical club that you can belong to where all you have to do is bring sunscreen and a towel? Yeah, you can be a member of the nautical club. There are different levels, but here's a little information about that. You still want to enjoy a boat, but you don't want to own one? Well, guess what? You can. Don't buy a boat. Join the Nautical Boat Club, formerly known as the Nashville Boat Club, now with online reservations. Located on four Middle Tennessee lakes, Percy Priest, Old Hickory, Center Hill, and Tim's Ford. Members enjoy unlimited use of our wake surf, ski, tri-tune, and fishing boats. When you arrive at the dock, your boat is clean, fueled, and loaded with your favorite water toys, and it's all included in the monthly dues. Join the Nautical Boat Club today. Call 615-232-9100 or visit nauticalboatclub.com. Com. had no idea it was that easy and and it's really affordable if you've always wanted a boat but you don't know the first thing about owning one you know marina fees and slip fees and all that other stuff and all the maintenance if you don't want all that maintenance and all that stuff like that or something breaks in the boat or you got to winter it you got to dry dock it you got to do all those things see i was in a boat before i could walk so trust me <laughs> Be, boat ownership is not nearly as fun as boat rental. <laughs> Be the nautical club over the Nashville Boat Club. I love that uh, uh, Mark Sheriff and his friend, the guys over the boat locker, talk to them about their the nautical uh, boat club. It's really incredible. Let's move on to motorcycles. It's coming the season where motorcycles are the rage. And I know there are some great riding around here. When it comes Highway 70, whether you're on the west side of town, or whether you're on the east side of town. There are places like on the east, everybody ends up at uh, at Snow White Diner in Lebanon. People, I mean, they come around between the hot rod weeks and things like that, or the motorcycle weeks, the Snow White's where they always end up. Now, if you're on the west side, they end up at the Sonic and Kingston Springs or Carl's Perfect Pig. There are great places to ride. Motorcycles are everywhere. But if you're driving a car, motorcycles can be dangerous, not only to the motorcyclist, but to you. Here's how to be safer on the road. Our Tennessee Department of Highway Safety is helping us drive and stay alive with motorcycles getting more prevalent on our roads. Per vehicle miles traveled in 2020, motorcyclists were about 28 times more likely than passenger vehicle occupants to die in a motor vehicle crash and were four times more likely to be injured nationwide. From 2017 to 2021, there were 775 lives lost on Tennessee roadways due to motorcycle crashes. The top counties in Tennessee with the highest number of motorcycle fatalities are Shelby, Davidson, Knox, Hamilton, Montgomery, Blunt, Sullivan, and Rutherford. Let's dive a little deeper to understand why motorcycle safety is so important. Hello, 
I'm Lieutenant Joe A.G. with the Tennessee Highway Patrol Motorcycle Division. I've been riding motorcycles for over 20 years and I've been a police motorcycle instructor for 16 plus years. Operator inexperience and braking is one of the leading causes of motorcycle crashes in Tennessee. Motorcyclists must be efficient in braking to be safe riders. Most motorcycle riders are first trained to drive passenger vehicles, which makes them conditioned to brake with their foot. The major difference between using brakes in a car versus a motorcycle is that a motorcycle utilizes the front brake for 90% of the braking and the rear brake for 10% or less. Motorcycles stop faster than cars. Drivers often misconceive the actual distance between them and motorcycles. Therefore, it's vital for cars to allow ample time and space for braking. This means motorcycle riding requires experience. Riders need more seat time. Helmet use is vital when it comes to motorcycle safety. Tennessee is a helmet state, meaning all riders must wear a helmet while riding. If you're ever in a serious motorcycle crash, the best hope you have for protecting your brain is a motorcycle helmet. Always wear a helmet that meets DOT compliance standards. Novelty helmets may not meet the necessary safety standards and will not provide the best protection needed in a crash. Here are a few tips for sharing the road with motorcyclists. Check your mirrors and blind spots before switching lanes. Motorcycles are smaller than passenger vehicles. They can be difficult to see. Always signal your intentions before changing lanes or merging with traffic. This allows motorcyclists to anticipate your movements and find a safe lane position. Allow a motorcyclist to full lane width. Remember, the motorcyclist uses the whole lane, not part of the lane. Share the road, but not the lane. A motorcyclist needs room to maneuver safely. Allow ample following distance both in front and rear when following a motorcycle. This provides the rider more time to maneuver or stop in an emergency. Here are a few safety tips for riders. We encourage motorcyclists to make themselves visible to other drivers. Wear a DOT compliant helmet and use reflective tape and gear to be more visible. Safe motorcycling takes balance, coordination and good judgment. Never ride while impaired and avoid cell phone distractions. Get proper training. Repeated research from across the country all lean to proper training saving lives. We welcome all riders to complete the Tennessee Motorcycle Rider Education Program. This statewide training caters to all motorcyclists and is available for all skill levels, including beginners and advanced riders. To learn more about the program, contact info at tntrafficsafety.org. Enjoy our beautiful state while riding, but always remember to use sound judgment, practice your braking, and wear a properly fitted helmet. Ride safe, Tennessee. Thank you for watching Talking Traffic Safety. For more episodes and information, visit tntrafficsafety.org. Take care and drive safe. Well, just like I promised, we have a little a little visit to Green Door Gourmet, and we're going to learn about edamame. What is edamame? Those little green beans that you get if you go get sushi? Well, if you've never been to a sushi place, you might not exactly know when you get edamame in your CSA box or go to the farmer's market. What in the heck? What is this? Is it a bean? Is it uh, an appetizer, as they say? <laughs> Well, we've got the scoop right here on Edamame. From Green Hi, Door. welcome back to Green Door Gourmet. My name is Richard Jones, Executive Chef here in the Culinary Education Centre. And today we'll talk a little bit about soybeans. And we occasionally have them in the CSA box. And I just want to let you all know that uh, as beautiful as they are, they can't be eaten raw. Like a lot of beans that are raw, they contain saponins and lectins that can interfere with the digestive system, the hormones uh, through the thyroid, as well as other digestive issues. And so we need to blanch them or cook them or soak them before they're used. And so today we'll have a simple way of enjoying edamame. Edamame is a little bit different from strictly soybeans as they're the immature beans that are still in the pod and so they're tender and green. A mature soybean is used for ingredients uh, such as tempeh and tofu and miso paste. So here we go. 
Step one is to remove the pods from the plant and you can simply just sort of firmly hold the plant in one hand and then pick off the pods with the other. Add salt and bring water to a boil and then we're going to let them simmer for between three to five minutes. So from here we'll simply strain them off um, and you know allow them to, to cool. And so you can serve them uh, shortly after letting them cool for a little bit and serving them with something like uh, a little oyster or soy sauce for dipping and then you simply place them between your teeth and just bite down gently and remove the bean from the pod. You can see how it comes out. Or you can go one step further and collect the pods for a dish such as a stir fry. And so the next step would be to blanch them and then put them into ice water to stop that cooking. And so if you collect enough of the beans, you can freeze them for later at this point because they've been cooked and then chilled and package for the freezer, or you can use them in a recipe such as the stir fry that I have in the description below. Enjoy. I grew up on a soybean farm. Did you know that I was like yesterday years old before I realized that edamame was actually just soybeans? Because, I mean, we soybeans were something that you made stuff out of. It wasn't like you ate the soybean. I grew up with those very pods, and not one time did we ever eat one. <laughs> they're a high source of protein, and now they're one of my favorite things. So edamame, soybeans, whatever you call them, they're good to eat. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed Menu Monday and what we do here. Thank you guys for being part of what we do. And remember, FWS. Follow, subscribe, and share. Wherever you're watching this program, it's always going to be positive. There's always going to be something informative and something to uplift. Be safe, everybody. Be kind. Remember, most of all, you are loved. Have a great rest of your day. Nothing like the sunrise with your coffee in the morning. You're taking a good book off the shelf. Another thing I love the most from being on my own. Is together with everybody else. Together, like a silent Sunday service. Together, on my front porch with my friends. Together, with who's ever there standing next to me. Yeah, together is my favorite place to be.